I'm here at a conference in Turkey where I'm about to be converted into a hologram. I'm just going to take you through a little bit of the technology. Here we are in the process of setting up and uh, I'll just show you where we are. This is an absolutely huge stage as you can see with two video screens on one side and on the other and uh, we've got my slides in the middle and here we have a hologram, or at least this is we where I'll appear tomorrow, and uh, also having a conversation with myself standing on the stage. One of us will be in the past, and the other will be in the future. And this is all for a client event for TB, which is uh, one of the banks in Turkey. <laughs> So here we are, we're in the process of recording the hologram and to do that we're going to use green screen technology. What's that? It's a room which is entirely lined with green material. In fact it's got green walls, green ceiling and no shadows. It's got huge amounts of studio lights. And it's just like the studio that is used for uh, things like uh, the weather forecasts on TV. And when you process it, it means that whatever is behind me that is green disappears. And I better not get any green in my glasses, because if my glasses get a bit of green reflection on them, then my glasses turn transparent and the whole picture, my, my bits of my face will, will become transparent. Because when this is processed, you will only see a background and the background will be completely blank. And that's what we need to create the hologram for tomorrow's show. And here are some of the technicians here. We've been working all day on this. <laughs> now what we're going to do next is to take a journey through the future. We're now going to look at the next five years of the future from 2015 to 2020. So, do I understand from this that biofuels are dead as a fuel by 2015? We need to check. Sure not. not. I mean, there's more to biofuels than burning up with food in cars with trucks. Now what we're going to do next is to take a journey through the future. 14, yes, the year 2015, and here we have another version of myself. I'm walking around, yes, in the world, in 2015, all of us, in a way, are now moved into the future, and we're now going to look at the next five years of the future, from 2015 to 2020. I just got one question to ask you. What were the greatest surprises, the, the most unexpected things for you, looking back from 2015 to where I am now, in 2010? What surprised you most? Well, it's not just the last five years, but really it's the last couple, I guess. And you just think of so many different events that we've seen, whether it's climatic events, it's been political events, the standoff between the Russia and Iran, uh, new ways of using technology, uh, engineering, nanotech, biotech, every tech to solve the world's greatest challenges. And of course, oil is at the heart of it with a spike of $178 just two years ago. I know it's come down a little to 98, but it'll be back up. So Tommy, uh, what do you think oil prices will be by 2020 then? <laughs> 2020, who knows? I mean, we've had a spike just recently, as I say, 178. It's not inconceivable, it could spike up 220, 230. Quite honestly, it depends whether we get settlement in Iran. I mean, that's what it depends. All, uh, the whole dynamic of that argument has changed, and I think we'll find this question is settled quite quickly in the next time. So, if you join in the European Union, what year? Well, okay. okay so, I'm not, just explain it. Slow down for a minute. And how, how do that yeah, happen? It's a sensitive question. It's a sensitive question. And I'm not saying it's going to happen, and I'm not going to do it today. I'm just saying, because of the shake-up that the world has been in, 